Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm taking you through a virtual exhibition of our IB Year 13 students because of course we're all not in school at the moment, but we'd really like to share with you the work that has been produced over the last two years. First, we come to the work of Eloise in Year 13. And as you can see, her work um, covers a whole range of things, but it's mostly based on the environment and our neglect of the environment. So as you go through, you'll start to see some of those symbolic images within her work. She works in a range of different styles. She's got here some installation work. This work is, the bird cages have been found, but all the items within the bird cages have been made by her. So if you look at the little skulls and also the crows, the golden crows, these are made, um, modeled 3D on a 3D software program and then printed using the 3D printer. The crows are gold because um, symbolically they're supposed to represent the wealthy um, members of our, of our world and also the, the small skulls are supposed to represent the, the workers in our world and how um, a lot of the time it's unfair um, and this piece of work is called class divide so you can see that the symbolic qualities within that. This piece here is a digital painting so if you look closely you can see that all of these strokes are made with the digital, um, with digital tools using a tablet and have been painted by her in a digital way and you can see in the background again different issues that have inspired this piece from climate change to pollution to things that are happening around the world that are making her this person um, cry as you can see here and so this reoccurring matter in her work reflects how our own doing is then coming back to affect us so you'll see that in a lot of her work this is some pottery work created by Eloise and these pieces have been made on the wheel. So it's actually quite difficult to make something like this on the wheel. Um, we asked one of the, well we invited a, an artist from Chiang Mai to come and work with our students to teach them to quite a high level on how to throw pottery. These pieces have also been scraffitoed so she scratched it in the designs into the glaze and then we fired them with the glaze in them so they've gone through quite a process to make them this way. As you can see this reoccurring theme within her work about life cycles and how again pollution and death from pollution and, and how we are kind of squashing and crushing different elements in our environment and how that is returning to us is then present in her work. And as you can see here this is a larger piece that also is reflective of life cycles. So again, damaging and ruining animals' habitats and then reoccurring to then affect ourselves. So this piece was an earlier piece. This is created in pen and colour pencil and this piece is a digital painting. This large piece here is also another digital painting. Um, as you can see, it's very realistic. This takes a lot of skill and work um, in the program to create something that is this accurate. Uh, this piece is about genetic modification and how we, we eat things that are genetically modified. As you can see the expiry date here and how fresh are the things we're eating. This piece here um, is called Silent Rebellion and as you can see it's a pen piece, pen on paper, and it's about how nature is then recovering and taking back what we have then destroyed. This piece here is herself. It's a self-portrait um, inspired by a Thai artist and he creates work similar to this and again it's reflective of how everything is a cycle of destruction. A little bit dark. <laughs> Um, and then this piece here is about pollution in our oceans. So this piece was designed to be central in, our, in the exhibition because then people would have to then walk around and through it so that then they were also affected like the nature and wildlife in our seas having to navigate around the plastic and pollution that we create. So as you can see here, eventually you end up with the fish, um, but we've 
purposefully included quite a lot of rubbish and things collected from the beach to then make it difficult for people to walk around as the fish are swimming it's difficult for them to to go through the ocean again in here one of her pieces is an animation so you can see here that this animation is designed to show an oil spill like the boats in Phuket um, where a lot of the, the tourist boats and the Dow boats drop a lot of oil into the ocean and this is the effects of it. I think that's all for Eloise. So now we're going to move on to Evie's work. This piece in the corner here is a work by Evie. We've put it in here because it's a, it's a lamp. It's been created on the 3D printer. She's designed the image in Photoshop um, and manipulated the images and then we've then she's then worked on it to, to make it able to print 3D. So she's then used a 3D package to design it. This piece is interactive, so if you touch different buttons, it has coding within it to then change it um, based on the person looking at it. So it's kind of an interactive piece and, and it's a fun piece, I think, for the, if the students were here that they would be able to play around. But I'll let Ben's take you around it so you can see the detail within it as well. Okay, so taking you back outside to the rest of Evie's work, you can see that she's got, a lot of her work is based on portraits and also the human body. Some of it is based on herself and reflects different emotions that she's feeling at the different times throughout the IB. Some of it is self-preservation, so she wants to create images that preserve that moment in time. And some of them are also symbolic of different things that she, um, that she has like connected with in Thailand and also different parts of her work that relate to um, the environment and also people around her as well. As you can see a lot of them are portraits and self-portraits so this is a self-portrait created in oil. This was also inspired by an artist that we brought in to come and work with the students, Mercedes Carbonell, and she taught the students how to work in oil paint to quite a high standard. So you can see the hair, the detail in the hair um, has got lots of layers within it. This piece is a digital painting. And you can see again, there's a, there's a good level of accuracy in color and anatomy. This piece is another digital painting and you can see the eyes around the figure here. The figure is supposed to be um, a performer and this reflects, it's like a, kind of like a self um, portrait in a way because it reflects the Evie's um, fear of performing and people watching her. This piece here is a 3D printer piece, so it's modeled on 3D software and then printed using the 3D printer. This piece here is about, of course, the struggle of IB and how demanding it can be and then how people um, have a lot of expectations at that time and what the future may hold. This is a self-portrait and a lot of the images relate to a famous artist called Frida Kahlo and also the images themselves are symbolic to her in different ways, different parts of the painting. So moving over here, after working with Mercedes Carbonell, the visiting artist, Evie wanted to develop her oil painting skills. So you can see the progression between her work um, as an oil painter. This is one of her, I think, most sort of stunning pieces because you can see the detail within this um, and the seascape is a very difficult painting to paint. It's a very accomplished piece of work for a young student. This piece is very large, so you can get back right to see it, or maybe you need me in it to give you a sense of scale. <laughs> and you can see the centre is a, an acrylic painting, but the hands around it are a very large laser cut piece. 
This was very difficult to, to plan and to create. It's been designed in Adobe Illustrator, the laser cut. And as you can see, the panels were cut separate because the laser cutter can only cut so large. So then she had to puzzle them together and work out the sizing to make sure that all the pieces fit together. And that was quite difficult in itself. This piece is a stippled pointillism piece. So you can see this is created in like a white pen on black paper. It's very detailed and will take a, a very long time to create. It's about how small we are um, in the world and how perhaps our problems may seem very big at one time are actually not that, that big in the grand scheme of things. So moving on, she's also got another 3D, sorry, another digital painting here. And that's one of her first digital paintings. And also here, an acrylic painting, um, which I know that she's not as proud of, but I still think is a very good, a good painting for a young student. Okay, so moving on, that's the end of Evie's work. We're moving on to one of our other students, which is Kaylee. So if you come through. Here we are. Her work is mostly about her culture. So she grew up um, in a Filipino culture. She's, she is from the Philippines, but um, half English as well. And her work is descriptive of like religion and politics and the things that also she observes from her, from her own culture that are perhaps sometimes positive and sometimes negative as well. So you can see that she's also started off with a self-portrait um, as taught by the artist Mercedes Carbonell. And you can see again, the detail in the hair is very um, well executed here. This piece here is about religion and Catholicism and the church. So you can see that there is a lot of symbolic, symbolic pieces within that. And it's a, a path to heaven and then also you can see kind of like hell at the bottom here. A lot of her work as well as, the, as, well of, as, well as what I've spoken about is um, relates around mutation. So she's interested in um, comic books and fantasy and surrealism. So you can see hints of that in her work as well. So here, this image here re represents like a, a struggle. And then also here, you can see that these creatures are similar to like um, the creatures and the villains that you might see in comic books and this is a self-portrait of herself. You can see that these creatures here have taken on a 3D form as well because she again has used um, modeling software to create a 3D printer piece and created a colony of these 3D printer creatures ending up with like a, a mother creature at the top here. This is one of her first pieces. Again, it's another self-portrait um, called Abnorm Abnormality. And you can see that there's mutant features within this as well. This piece, again, created under the instruction of the potter that we brought in from Chiang Mai, Kun Wong, who taught the students, like I said before, to throw at a very high level. So you can see here, this is a wheel thrown pot and then has hand-built elements in it. You can see the mutation kind of theme throughout it here. Um, some of these bits have been hand-built and this has been thrown, but then had areas then cut out and removed. And also, if I turn it around so you can see, the faces within here are also hand-molded by the student, by Kaylee. A very complicated piece. Okay, moving on, still within Kaylee's body of work. 
you can start to see that eyes have a common commonality between a few of her pieces. This represents um, at times sort of political and government views. So she's created this and her own views on this as well. That's again why she's chosen to create a self-portrait. And this is an oil painting. Similar that these two kind of reflect each other. This is a digital painting. So again, using like a, a tablet, she's then worked in, um, I think Procreate for this one, where she's then layered up color and detail. This piece is created on the laser cutter. Again, you can see the laser cut parts, the wooden parts have been designed on Adobe Illustrator and then cut by the laser cutter. And then the colored areas here have been painted in acrylic. Okay, so taking you on to our next student's work. This is Max's work. Um, from year 13. She's also, I think her official name is Louise, but I think a lot of people know her as Max. You can see that her work, again, she's a student that's um, Filipino and her work mostly revolves around Filipino culture and also people from that area as well. So the children that she's drawn here are indigenous um, children from the Philippines from the mountainous areas where she went and visited during one of the holidays and took her own photographs to work from. So you can see here she's got a very unique style of kind of colour and that then is replicated in some of her work as well. These are quite large in terms of scale. I'll stand here so you can see. Okay. And before she came to do this, she started to create smaller portraits of children, some of which you might recognise around the school. Some of the children are students that attend the school. So if you recognise your son or daughter, they probably have been posed for some of our, for, for some of our drawings. These are pen on paper and, and quite detailed as well. Some are pencil, these are pencil, this is pen. This student also worked with an artist um, in her own time to, to learn their style and try to develop her own skill. As you can see, some of her other work is related to festivals and like traditional games of the Philippines. So this is a fiesta and this is a traditional game that they play. This is about one of their religious festivals, which is a penance. And then also some of her work relates to fairy tales and stories. And I'll show you another piece of hers in a minute over there. This piece is modeled on the 3D printer. I know it's a little bit scary for some young members of our community, so, but it's, it's uh, also influenced by um, characters, creatures that we see in uh, books. This piece is based on her penance piece as well. This is a painting. And this is an etching. This is again, this is herself here and all of the creatures from her childhood stories that she'd heard about underneath. So she's kind of floating above all of those fears. And taking you kind of right back to where we started, there's another piece of hers that's created on the laser cutter and also painted as well. So just at the start here, you can see like a big box. Again, this is kind of re represents fairy tales and stories that she had heard when she was a child. So inside is herself. And then you will also see kind of a spooky face poking out. And that's one of the monsters from a fairy tale that she's, um, that she'd heard when she was a child. So these pieces here have been created by the laser cutter and then she's painted some of these areas as well. Okay, so last but not least, we'll take you down to Channon's work. 
His work is mostly based on um, architecture and also impossible pathways and doorways. So it kind of is slightly surreal that the pathways and doorways seem never ending. Um, and his work has developed kind of a body of work in that theme. So his first piece here, you can see is a sculpture, again, created on the laser cutter, where he's designed um, original drawings that then he's composed together. So it has three different layers. This first layer is a portrait of himself. This is one of the buildings, or a few of the buildings that he's combined together. And the last layer here is multiple imagery that he's then combined to create a background layer. Over here, you can see this is his 3D printer modelled piece. This is a kind of a, a self-portrait. It's reflected on him and it's like a mask and it represents how people sometimes mask their emotions. Again, this is something similar to this piece where it's created. You can see that this figure here is kind of stylized. Um, it's meant to kind of be like a self-portrait, but also uh, the message to the viewer is kind of like that we should maybe show our emotions. And these are kind of like symbolic of these character, characters breaking out of this mold. He's also got pottery here, which is reflective of the buildings that he's looked at to create his impossible dimensions. This piece is inspired by a little bit by Escher, but also by um, an artist called Aaron Curry, which he then um, based some of the line work of from when he saw the artists in the Singapore Tyler Print Institute on one of our art trips. This piece is a self-portrait where he's got kind of like a, a safe um, environment, like a, of, parks and castles, which is where he feels at home, and this other area where it's kind of like an urban landscape. This, this piece is inspired by Escher as well, so you can see those impossible pathways that if you recognise this artist, he's quite famous, his work um, has these kind of um, steps and ladders that seem never ending, and you can see that influence in Channon's work here. This piece is his painting in the style of Mercedes Carbonell, but it's a self-portrait of him. And also this is his painting, again a self-portrait in the style of John michel Basque. This piece is based on his home country of Germany and one of the castles there that he feels most peaceful in. Okay. And that's it. Thank you very much for joining us for this exhibition and I hope you get to see it in real life very soon.